Today I'm going to be doing a comparison between a 2007 Ford Mustang Shelby GT and a 1981 Porsche 928. You're probably thinking why would I compare these two cars? Well why not? They're actually very similar. Both cars are about 300 horses. They're both five-speed V8s. They're both considered GT cars. I do have to apologize, both cars are pretty dirty. I didn't get a chance to have a chance to wash both of them, so I just wanted to get this done on a day that it's not raining or snowing for once. The 928 I had weighed and it was about 80% full of gas and it has a 22.7 gallon gas tank and it was uh, like I said 80% full about 6.3 pounds for 91 octane fuel about 115 gallons I'm guessing or pounds so the car is just under about 3300 pounds which in the day this car was considered big and heavy and by today's, by today's standards it is by no means big and heavy the Shelby I had weighed was 3480 I believe and it had about a half a tank of gas about 50 pounds of gas in it so just over 3,400 pounds. I'm guessing probably about 150 pounds separate these two cars, which most people consider Mustangs to be pretty heavy as well. But on these older S197s, they're actually pretty light compared to the newer S550s, which are four or 500 pounds lighter than these. And a lot of people always talk about horsepower, but they don't talk about torque, and they don't talk about torque compared to weight. This three valve S197 torque per pound is pretty similar to an S550. Now an S550 is going to beat in a drag race all day long, but off the line, on ramp, two, three pulls, it's not as far apart as you would think. Top end, 60, 70 mile an hour pull, yeah, it's going to walk away from this thing. Even the 2013-2014 uh, Coyote Motors with the four valves, they just have a lot more power on the top end. As you can see, they're pretty similar in size. Mustang is definitely a little bit bigger, slightly taller. I'm gonna go with slightly wider. But they're about the same length. Now they're parked a little crooked. Mustang is a little bit longer in the back and the front. The height, just slightly taller. They both have aftermarket wheels. The Mustang, or the, sorry, the Porsche has a upgraded from about a 15 inch wheel to either a 15 or 16 to an 18. Significant width increase. So I gotta run the numbers to see how close to the original size overall diameter it is the mustang has an original 18 size total diameter but i've increased the size of the wheel significantly on the width to a 275 from a 235 so that makes a huge handling difference 
The interior on the Mustang is pretty common. We got the old plastic. Still a few years old. Pretty basic. A lot of cheap plastic. Leather seats. Porsche's got nicer material originally, but it's 37 years old. Vinyl. It came with a leather option. This just doesn't have it. It's got a cracked dash. A little bit different styling. I have I have more headroom in the Mustang. I'm pretty tall. I'm almost 6'1 and I have a long torso and my head is very little room in the Porsche. But I have tons of knee clearance. And if I took this shelf out, I could probably straighten my leg. I can st definitely straighten it on the right side of the clutch. You got the step is a little is a little closer, and that that shelf was in the way. But one thing I love about the Mustang, I can extend that leg out while I'm driving. My knee doesn't cramp up. I'm sitting in the Mustang. My knees tend to hit pretty close to that dash. I got plenty of headroom. We got a couple inches in here. Since I'm tall, I lean the seat back quite a bit. And then I have to slide it up a little bit so my comes out right. Probably that's just me. I don't fit in a lot of cars very easily, but I can easily extend that leg out straight while I'm driving on a long road trip. Let's take him for a drive. Let's do a second gear, 20 mile an hour pull. second gear pull. Two, three, upshift. gear pull so try it again and starting in at 40 and third It takes a second for it to get going, so let's try that in uh, third gear at 40. Right, third gear at 40. Around 
6,000 RPM. Power on this thing is a little bit on the higher end. It definitely has longer gears than the Mustang. You don't get that quite the initial punch that you get on the Mustang, but it, it revs out a little better and it does it with a little bit less drama. definitely heavier in the Porsche it's power assisted but definitely takes doesn't take two hands to move it but it's not it's not just it's definitely not as easy as just making a movement with one hand trying to do a big turn with one hand you really need to kind of keep it where you want to get it it's not hard like you're driving a non-power steering car it's just a lot stiffer than definitely the Mustang in most cars that I've driven the shifting in the Porsche it's almost a uh, two-part you can't power shift this thing it's out of gear into gear with a slight pause it's not, uh, the transmission on this thing is kind of one of the weak areas. Never really had good reviews. 80, 85% of these cars were automatics. A lot of people say there was a reason for that, that the manual just wasn't a great transmission, but everybody wants to own a manual at the same time because they're a lot more fun to drive. But if you try to power shift this thing, it definitely crunches the gears a little bit. Now that could be some worn parts. It's an old car. These ball cups on these things tend to wear out. I think I may need to replace those. So that could have something to do with it. But when you're shifting from second to third, it's definitely, I'm out and I'm in. The two, three shift is probably the, the biggest pause shift three to four you got to go up and to the right by the time you get there it's fine this is a dog leg transmission so first is down and to the left and then over and up for second straight down into third over and up for fourth and then straight down into fifth it's more of a historical racing car shift pattern which is kind of ironic because this was never really known as a racing car it was GT car, highway, Autobahn, 150 mile an hour all day long type of car. But it is fun to go two, three, just straight down, and four, three, two for that matter. I haven't had this car for that long, only about six months now and I've owned the, the Mustang for seven years so I'm definitely not as used to this car as I am that one but it's a lot easier to heel toe shift that car 
partly because there's just more room down by the pedals this car's really kind of your heel starts to hit the firewall not the firewall but the tunnel the transmission tunnel before you can get it on the uh, on the gas pedal you really almost have to put not so much heel toe but heel middle of foot because the pedals are really close together and if you put your toe on the brake and try to do the heel your heel ends up hitting the, the wall and it, it kind of stops you from hitting the gas pedal but that may just be take some getting used to I didn't know really how to heel toe until just recently and once I kind of figured out the process and how to do it it is it is kind of fun so now I do it or at least try to do it a lot it doesn't always work out but when you hit it it definitely it's definitely kind of fun quality in the 928 it's phenomenal it's not a true apples to apples type of comparison since I do have coilovers and I'm not gonna make that on this car so it's just got a much better suspension system put on it I'm assuming the original system was much better than the Than the Mustang out of the box, but it's got upgraded coilovers on it. So trying to compare coilovers to stiff springs and relatively cheap shocks and struts on the Mustang just isn't really a fair comparison. But this thing is just super planted in the corners. It's obviously got independent rear suspension, and the Mustang does not. It's a live axle. this thing just just stays there they both sound good they're both v8s they sound different the Porsche has a aftermarket exhaust on it so again it's not a real fair comparison you're definitely not gonna mistake either one of them for being a four or six cylinder Shifting this thing is tremendous. Her short throw shifter is fantastic. It's very mechanical. Mustang is so much lighter after being in the, the 928. You can dodge potholes and make quick corrections just really easily. If you're driving either one by itself, I'm not saying one's better than the other, it's just different. So if you're going back and forth between the two cars, you definitely notice it. But if you're used to one or the other, there's really not a significant advantage. I'm assuming the the heavier steering and the 90 weight makes it a little bit better at higher speed, which it's designed for. Unless you have a specific preference over one or the other, they're both they're both fun to steer. They're just uh, they're just different.
definitely a bouncier ride. Like I said before, it's got really stiff springs on it. It's got the Ford Racing Performance parts, racing springs, and then relatively cheap struts and shocks. You can really use an upgrade. You put coilovers on this, it would be a huge difference. The 275 tires make a big difference too. Not only just rear wheel traction and keep it from breaking loose with the amount of torque that it has. This thing has 330 foot-pounds of torque. But with the turn-in, the 275s on the front just give it an amazing turn-in. Additional upgrades, a Watts link, some better shocks and struts. You do that to one of these, and it's a really fun car as far as handling. You know, Mustangs get a bad rap for handling, but that's only because they're relatively basic out of the box. You can make them handle really well. I take this car autocrossing, and it's it's definitely tricky, it's really hard in the rain, but it makes you a better driver. You get so much better at your throttle control, braking, then steering. But this thing will go around corners. Like I said, you make some of those other improvements and it make it even better. Everyone only wants to talk about four or 500 horsepower cars. This has 319 horses, 330 foot-pounds of torque at 3,400 pounds, and that's plenty. I mean, it, you could pass almost anything, unless you're gonna race somebody in a 911 Turbo or a Corvette or something like that. Yeah, you're gonna lose that race, but just driving around town, merging with traffic on ramps, this thing is a blast. It's got really good throttle response comes with the territory on a naturally aspirated V8, but that's why I like them. Personally, I like five speeds better than six speeds. You have all those gears and you have to use them. End up shifting a lot more. The gears are taller on a five speed. You can hold second and third gear for a lot longer. That's another big difference on these cars is the gearing. This car, first gear, once you get it rolling, you can put it in second. The 928, you really kind of have to get the revs up a little bit before you want to go into second or third. But you can hold it in gear longer on the 928. You don't need to shift it as soon. They both pull great, second, third, and fourth. 928 probably pulled better in fifth.
overall I'd say the Mustang is a little bit faster especially on the lower end on the higher end no but there's not too many places in America you can go that fast and not risk losing your license or much less getting put in jail with both these cars are fun or with the V8 and the torque that they have you know second third fourth gear pulls accelerating merging passing The other reason to compare these is they're both, you can find one in the 15 to 20,000 range, actually probably in the 10 to 20,000 range, depending on the mileage and the condition. So if you had to make a choice, you want to look for something modern that's fast, but not super fast. Either one of these cars are good. The 928, you're gonna to need to do a little bit more maintenance on your own. They're not maintenance intensive, but if you need to do it, it's gonna be expensive. If you find one in good condition, it shouldn't need much, but when it does, if you can do it yourself, it'll save you a lot of money. Whereas the Ford, going to be relatively easy to fix. I've never had a problem with this thing. It's 12 years old now, 50,000 miles, and I've never had one problem. Just change the oil and it's good. But I have a lot more miles on the 928. It's an older car, 122,000 miles, and it's 37 years old versus uh, 12 years old. saying you can pick one of these up between 10 and 20,000 for the money you really can't beat it and you can get a Toyota Camry with 300 horses these days but it doesn't have 330 foot-pounds of torque it's not rear-wheel drive doesn't make a good sound most likely not a manual it's just good value you don't need to spend Twenty five, thirty, forty thousand dollars on the car that's fun. For the people that are talking about, oh my car is a half second faster or even a full second faster. Okay, great. How often are you going to the drag strip or racing somebody? Most people are just driving their car around to work. Driving on the weekends for fun. You're not out there doing comparisons with your buddy. Anyway, that's my two cents. Both these cars are a blast to drive. Hope you enjoyed watching.